we can go now on with the rest of the program. So the focus of today is about also about e-health. So I would like to have on the stage um, Roberto Ascione from Razorfish Healthware. And thank you for being here. Roberto came yesterday night from Paris to stay with us today. I think he's is one of the most recognized experts in this area uh, of communication and healthcare. So I leave him on the stage. And do you have the clicker? Where's the clicker? Buongiorno a tutti. We still need a little bit of uh, old-fashioned technology for the time okay. being. Thank you. Okay. I think I'll uh, stay here to see the screen. Uh, so first off, uh, thank you, Nicole and Carlos, for the uh, invitation. I will walk you through uh, basically which are the opportunities from a startup perspective in the digital health space. Uh, and we'll go through this and probably have some questions in the end. So a couple of words about myself. My name is Roberto Ascione. I'm from Naples, Italy, and I'm still living in Italy, but traveling like crazy. Founded my own company in 96, uh, had an exit to Publicis Group in uh, 2006, then stayed as a manager there. Uh, but I'm an entrepreneur at heart, so we kept working with Publicis through a range of acquisition, and I'm, I'm very proud to, to serve as global president of Razorfish Healthware, which is a digital agency evolved into a technology company that is helping the transformation of a healthcare through uh, innovations and technologies. And I'll now walk you through what's going on in this very exciting space. So digital technologies have really become part of the fabric of life itself. It's something that is pervasive, as we all know. Uh, there's somebody hugging a bear here that we'll see on stage later. That's an object connected. There are glasses. Uh, we have more computers in this room than humans. And there are a number of technologies and, 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 uh, and I would say, uh, workflows and uh, concepts that are impacting healthcare in a way that has never happened before. Um, also, we are seeing a lot of the drivers of innovation of the mainstream digital, like crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, acceleration, that are already starting to impact healthcare and making a change in this field as well. I want to give you an example of how the borders between technology, communication, and healthcare are completely uh, disappearing. This is something that happened to myself. I was sitting in a conference, it was a couple of years ago, looking at the video uh, of a basically guy that was suffering for 10 years of a very, supposed to be very bad disease, and just before going to major surgery that would have changed his life forever, this guy by chance discovered that it was not the, this bad diagnosis, but was just a food intolerance. So he shoot a video. I was in this conference. The video was uploaded on a global video platform, subtitled in a language that the audience in France couldn't have understood. So I tweeted. Six months after, a friend of mine in another country saw the video, and she healed herself from the same you know, bad diagnosis because of that video. And I learned this a year after through a blog. So that's really a tweet that cured a person. So what was that tweet? Was a communication thing or was a medicine? I'm not really sure because that cured a person. So think about when this becomes mainstream. This is what basically is happening. There is an intersection between healthcare and technology that is going to change things forever in healthcare. Healthcare is the same since Hippocrates, 2,000 years, but will completely be disrupted as travel, as finance industries have been disrupted by digital. I am saying this since uh, quite a few years now. I sincerely believe that technology, in general, is the big drive b behind the change in healthcare. Healthcare is expensive. Healthcare is not for everyone. You need to be lucky to get sick in the right country. 
with the, at the right moment, knowing the right people, and having the right money in order to have a better chance to be cured. And this is unacceptable in a world where everyone should have equal access to care, early diagnosis, and quality of life. Digital technologies are the single thing that will make this possible. There are several trends that are impacted or are fueled by technology, I should say. Uh, we don't have time to go in detail. I prefer to go through examples, but I won't focus on the last one, which I think is very interesting. This is a modified the chart from Forbes very recently. Um, the individuals are taking care of their own health. So there's a consumerization of healthcare that is extremely interesting. So th this revolution is driven by technology and adoption from the users, not really for, from the establishment in a way. And that's, I think, it's quite uh, powerful. We are, as you know, in the digital mainstream at the transition between social, mobile, and uh, wearable. And there are a number of, I would say, impacts of this into what's possible in health and, and, and medicine. I'll bring you some example. Broke down in categories. So the first one is, of course, quantified self and, and, and big data. Here, there is a proliferation of self-tracking devices. Of course, these devices have to be tested. We need to understand how reliable they are, but they are, you know, booming on a consumer level. And so we have an unprecedented amount of data tracked about our own health. Also, those are becoming more kind of vertical, are starting to aggregate each other, forming stacks of data that are forming a base for us to discover new things about our own conditions. Objects are starting to be connected and health-oriented. This is an active fork that helps you to measure your food intake as you eat uh, in a sort of an interactive way. And you will see all a bunch of other objects coming up. Uh, this is a uh, transparent fridge uh, that is aware of what you have in your, basically, uh, you know, house and will help you with the right food habits. Think about pre-diabetes, think about food intolerances, etc. cetera. Um, we will have sensors integrated with uh, uh, clothes and, and, and fabrics, which will also allow us to go through continuous uh, data tracking. And also, we will have uh, way more self-health at home versus going in places to consume how health interactions. Up to, and these are first examples of personal dashboards where we will be able to own our own data, aggregate, model, and see how we are performing against our goals and against others, which I think is very important because one of the main things in, in the healthcare in general is the motivation and the adherence that you develop versus something you need to take care of and is no longer enough in a world that is so fast in the feedback process to go to see a physician each six months, you need something way quicker. So this kind of uh, workflows will allow us to keep up on a daily basis with what we need to know about how uh, own health conditions. Eventually, this will become a passive and maybe ingestible. These are, you know, tests about uh, uh, pills that you can swallow and send the data outside of your body, maybe to your phone. This will all happen, uh, and it's already kind of under testing. So imagine the amount of data we will collect about this. Another big area is uh, the la layering geography on healthcare uh, that I think it has been massively underestimated. Uh, our health conditions are deeply impacted by where we live, and this is something that we don't take into account, I would say, enough. Um, this that you see on the screen is, is, is a map that correlates uh, the basically, you know, incidence of a disease in areas compared to environmental factors on a micro uh, zone level, so down to the single, you know, little town. Uh, and this is quite interesting because today, if you know where a person has lived uh, when it comes to diagnosis or health process, that gives you meaningful insights about a lot of 
parameters and probabilities about what that person can have. So there's a whole a area that we can explore in layering, signaling, uh, geolocation into basically health conditions. And of course, there is the, you know, uh, in distance aspect of this. There are a lot of things we can do to deliver what is needed where the people are, regardless of their ability to move around. Gamification is also having an impact on health. Uh, gaming is fun, health is not fun, uh, especially if it's serious. Uh, there is all a trend at the intersection of these two uh, things, uh, which can have a positive impact on health and you know, related conditions. There are companies from the gaming space that are starting to think about health games, which I think is a very interesting trend. And this is a very concrete one. Pain Squad is an app that allows uh, uh, young uh, kids with, uh, that have to fill pain diaries in serious conditions to play while they do this. So they actually do it because they are motivated by a game experience. And they capture very important data for their caregivers. Um, gaming can be used also for training. This is uh, an example of an immersive experience where people learn about how a drug works by basically moving into a space using a, a combination of Kinect technology and a few other, uh, you know, uh, stuff. But basically, it brings the educational experience into reality versus reading on a book. And of course, we are immersed in, you know, into next generation interfaces. Uh, of course, there is a lot of uh, uh, talk these days about uh, glasses. Uh, glasses are something that it's interesting from a health perspective because they are able to layer rich data on you know, uh, actual reality. And this is something that you constantly do in health because you have to abstract from what you see and kind of try to model what you are basically measuring or, or, or viewing. And we have been working with physicians in this case uh, to figure out what can be done with glasses. And besides the, f the, the, I would say, amazing things that can be done, I want to point the attention on one thing that they came up as uh, the first application, which is patient identification through uh, the, the photo. Because in healthcare, and this is fascinating from a startup perspective, I guess, there are a number of basic problems unsolved. So recognize who a person is in a hospital is a still and basically unmet need or unsolved issue. There are often exchanges of patients. So they said basically, oh, glasses could be good to basically shoot a picture and say that's the right person I need to you know, basically give the drug to. So a lot of simple problems that can be solved with brilliant ideas. So that's why I believe it's a great playground for startup companies. Conclusions, so I think we gain a little bit of time since we, we started late. The first thing I want to say is that it is entirely possible. I would have a lot to say about, you know, Italy, Word, whatever. Uh, my company was started in Italy, was bought internationally, is still in Italy with uh, one of our two main global offices. Um, you need to travel a lot, of course, you know, uh, and, and really a lot. <laughs> I have uh, something like four million miles on only one carrier, so to give you an idea, but that's needed. World is global and we are not, so you're going to travel. With this said, uh, these are two success stories uh, in the startup camp that come from our interaction with this uh, word at, at Razorfish Healthware. Coming from the startup world, we are trying to giving back by helping startups to basically refine their concepts and help them to go to the market. One of these is, uh, was born in Spain that is very similar to Italy. It's a community that allows patients physicians and people that care about those patients to join together, especially in chronic diseases like diabetes, mental illness, etc., to basically work together and engage into an ongoing dialogue, measuring, sharing experiences, uh, tracking data, but in a sort of a closed, controlled, safe environment that has all the characteristics needed in healthcare. This started in Spain. 
uh, opened eight different diseases and now it has opened in Italy, in Germany, and is going global. And the, the second one I want to mention is Vidium.com. That's the platform I, I took that video from. This is another simple idea to Carlos' point before, scalable globally, which in fact is a scaling as we speak. Digital videos are the sixth most uh, wanted type of videos online about healthcare. But they are only available in English and they are not easy to find qualitative, trustable health videos. You can go on YouTube, you have a lot of health videos, but you know, quite scary. If you want a safe, true, tested videos, it's a completely different story. So this company had a very simple idea. It said, let's create a place where all or a lot of digitally qualitative healthcare videos can be found and through a subtitling technology at very low cost made them available in any language anywhere in the world. So that's basically Vidium.com that is online and is scaling quite quickly. So what you can do is that you can perform a search and learn about prevention in diabetes, heart diseases, whatever, and get the top videos from top universities of top you know, producers in your own language online and you can embed these videos wherever you are and wherever you need. So spreading you know, global knowledge about medicine uh, in a completely different way that is storytelling and is digital video. Both of these startups started in Italy, one plus US and the other one Spain, and basically came to life uh, traveling, you know, networking, but from these countries. And this is my last one. This is a, a phrase that more than 10 years ago, uh, someone from my team gifted it to me, and I use this because I believe this is exactly what we are talking about. So it doesn't matter where you were born or if you have funds or you don't have, if you have a great idea, all these things, if you commit yourself, will come you know, into place. Of course, you have to network with the right people, with the right you know, uh, institutions, but this is the spirit, I believe, of uh, bringing Seed Camp on, on, on tour and, you know, bringing this kind of close to where, you know, ideas and, and a potential base in our startup uh, is. So, yes, you're going to travel, but there's no reason why a great idea from Italy cannot become the next big thing at a global level. And that's true for Spain and for any other countries where you are not supposed, you know, to do uh, this. I think it's entirely possible and uh, will for sure happen. So with this, I thank you, and I don't know if you have questions or whatever. Thanks. Well, we surely have time for one question. If you want to, someone want to raise the hand? Otherwise, I will, okay. You have to stand up and do a big smile to the camera. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned that affordability is a problem in healthcare. Now, you said that everyone should have the right to affordable healthcare. I was wondering how collecting data, how you see collecting data can help with that, um, produce sort of grand affordable healthcare to everyone. Yeah, the, the, <clears throat> I think that's a great question. I'll take uh, like a step back to answer and, 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 and probably address uh, like from a, from a bigger perspective. Uh, healthcare is really behind. So there's a lot to do. There's data that needs to be aggregated. Once this data will be aggregated, then this data will have to be integrated each other because today we are sure. tracking maybe three, four devices. Then we have our data everywhere around where we have touched the health mm -hmm. system. Those things are we not see, recorded or not integrated. Salerno. Once this will be done, then we will have to understand what to do with them. But if you think about just one thing, the stay in a hospital, for example, is usually much longer than needed just because you need to reload all the data, reinvestigate all the past history. So if not else, just your health data will always be with you available and I can enable like a share on Facebook, you know, with Nicola, for example, my health history as my new physician, that will save days. And that's where most of the costs lie. So if we can cut those days, we will basically cut you know, the cost of the 
uh, health you know, uh, delivery. That's only one, and there are tons of others. That's why I believe technologies will disrupt things and finally will make care affordable. I have one question here, then I'm sorry, we have to, uh, if you can, okay, if you can stand up. I want to know what, what your experience is with public administrations on that. That is, uh, from my perspective, a it would be extremely... <laughs> I'm, uh, that's another great question, which I'm tempted, do you want a political answer or a true answer? <laughs> true answer, okay. <laughs> The true answer is that uh, one of my, uh, as I said, I started in 96, so my first, first, first company was about medical records, digital medical records in Italy. It took me six years to convince that that was, you know, something, uh, you know, uh, probably even already not late, you know, but was the right time. Uh, and then I had to basically park that company and, 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 and focus on other dimensions of the health and technology. This is all what I've been doing since forever. So that was fine. But basically, in 2014, we are still, you know, in the infancy of uh, aggregating medical records. And I think the public administration is keep fo focusing on, uh, I would say, linear expense cuts on what's easy to cut, like drug expenses, stuff like that, without biting the, I think in Italy it's probably 88 or 89% of the spend, which is the old delivery behind, which can be completely you know, uh, changed through usage of technologies. Even not big stuff, because I think that has been another mistake. You know, public administrators always shoot for the huge project. It should be completely the other way around. If, if you find a way to use a Skype to do you know, home you know, consultation, you should just encourage that instead of closing the hospital system so they cannot go on Skype and they cannot do that, you know? Uh, so I think the public administration should probably disrupt itself uh, but from the inside, because if you do from the outside, it's a revolution, and you know you don't like it. I think you should do from the inside. So just like a big corporation would do to create, you know, innovation, you know, I would say islands within the organization. I think public administration should do exactly the same, and will save a lot of money. I think will repay these investments by the savings largely. Great. Thank you very much, Roberto. Thank you for being here.